Una Fitzpatrick is a senior ecologist here at the centre and is coordinator of the All Island Pollinator Plan. So within the National Biodiversity Data Centre here we track changes. So we know that our pollinators are in real trouble. We know that of the 98 different types of bees that we have in Ireland, one third are threatened with extinction. And we also have a citizen science bumblebee monitoring scheme where volunteers right across the country um, take part in this scheme and that lets us track what's happening with our common bumblebees. So those common species, they have declined by 14% just since 2012. So I suppose, you know, the crux of it is that pollinators are in serious trouble in Ireland. What's been happening in parallel is that in universities across the world and also in Ireland, and particularly in Trinity College Dublin through Professor Jean Stout, um, researchers have been looking into why this is happening and what to do about it. So then it was a matter of coming together, you know, we know there's a problem there, we know how to solve it. So the All Ireland Pollinator Plan came out of that. It was about bringing those two things together and identifying a plan to try and address the problem. And it's a call to action. And what it's done is it's identified 81 different actions to try and make Ireland more pollinator friendly again. And it's about looking at the landscape. You know, can we make farmland more, more pollinator friendly? Can we make public land more pollinator friendly? And can we make private land more pollinator friendly? And really that's what it's about. And the meadow that we're in right now, how pollinator friendly is that? This is amazing and you know everyone can do this and actually I've got a small garden in the city and I don't let the whole garden go like this but I do have a strip down the side and you'd be amazed at the number of bees and other insects that, that come in to visit. So this is so easy to do if you just don't cut the grass so often it gives these wildflowers a chance to come up. This all happens naturally, you know we didn't plant this with anything and there's huge areas across the country whether it's in schools or gardens, parks, roadside verges, you know where there could be more of this. I think it looks fantastic to humans, but I know for a fact it's brilliant for bees and other pollinators. And how well have you been supported in your work by other bodies such as county councils? We've set up a framework for councils where they can formally agree to endorse the All Ireland Pollinator Plan and in doing that they agree to take action to help and to tell us what it is that they're doing and we've had a huge amount of support. So at the minute, I think 55% of all councils across the island have already agreed to formally partner with the All Ireland Pollinator Plan and take action. And you know, I have to say that from traveling around the country and you see what's happening within local authorities, there is some amazing work that's happening. You know, huge changes over the last, you know, three, four or five years. Bernadette Guest uh, is the Heritage Officer with Waterford City and County Council. We met at what was once the city's landfill site and is now a nature park. Waterford City and County Council has signed up to the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan, uh, Bernadette. How did that come about and what does it mean? So Waterford City and County Council are one of 23 local authorities that have signed up to delivery of the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan. Um, in Waterford we're very fortunate that we have the National Biodiversity Data Centre right here on our doorstep. Uh, we've always had a strong working relationship with them and we've collaborated on, on a number of different projects over the years. So when the All-Ireland Pollinator Plan was published um, we, we clearly saw a role for the local authorities in delivering some of the objectives in the plan. There are three key areas um, that we can have meaningful engagement with the plan. So they are public spaces, uh, promotion and policy. So in terms of public spaces, um, today we're here in Kilbarry Nature Park and like any local authority, we have a number of green spaces that we're responsible for managing. Um, so they would range for, from urban parks like the People's Park to uh, nature parks and also recreational trails like the Waterford Greenway. Um, so in these public spaces, there's a balance, I suppose, between users and what they require. Um, so in urban parks where there's there's really strong interaction with, with the green space where families come to play and picnic and play sport. They obviously need intensive management. Other areas like here where there's obviously space for recreation with a walking track and outdoor gym, but because it's, it's a 20 hectare site, it lends itself to areas that can be left unmanaged or managed for biodiversity, but um, you know, to the, the untrained eye, uh, I suppose, the untidy areas. But these are really good for nature and wildlife. What are the 
the challenges perhaps uh, associated with embedding the pollinator plan in terms of the public mind and people who might be working for the council? Yeah, I suppose in terms of the pollinator plan and as our role as a local authority, I suppose it's a question of balance. So there, there's the public expectation that who've seen the green spaces being maintained and then there's a change in management and you know sometimes they question that. So I suppose we have to communicate the message. So for example at the roundabout at King's Meadow where again you'll see um, an outer buffer zone of grass that hasn't been mowed, we have a sign there that says Managed for biodiversity. So we're explaining to the public we're doing this with intent. Um, you know, we're allowing the, the grass to grow so that there is a food source and habitat for bees. And what are the plans for the future? So I think we intend to continue and expand our work in the management of public spaces, um, in the promotion and also in policy. Um, so continuing collaborations with the, the National Biodiversity Data Centre, we've worked successfully with them on promotional videos, on you know, actions that you can do as a community group, as a farmer, as a local authority. Um, also working with other groups like the men's shed groups um, because they're, they're very enthusiastic about getting involved in the, the making of insect hotels for example and we've installed quite a few of those along the Greenway. Um, towns have also an important role to play, um, so encouraging them to carry out pollinator friendly actions and getting involved in the pollinator award for the Tally Towns competition. Um. How important is it to get buy-in from agriculture and farming considering they manage so much of the landscape? We worked with farmers to identify actions that they could take that would be realistic and that wouldn't impact on their profit margins. So we were very fortunate actually to get some European Innovation Partnership uh, funding through the Department of Agriculture. So we've just launched a big five-year project which is happening in, uh, in Kildare. So we're collaborating with a group of 40 farmers in Kildare and the idea is that all farmers, regardless of the type of farm or the intensity level, can make small changes to become more pollinator friendly. So what changes might those be? There's one change, if I could just say there is one change that would make all the difference in the world and that is how hedgerows are managed. So if those hedgerows were not cut so often, so they were allowed to flower, so they're cut in more of an A shape and allowed to flower, that would have a huge impact because those flowers are providing food for bees and other insects at this time of year, you know, then the berries provide food for mammals and birds in the autumn. And uh, you have your no-dig garden right beside it. One of those farmers partaking in the European Innovation Partnership project is Kim McCall. I went to meet him on his farm in Kildare. Yeah. Looking around at the perimeter of the field here, is this the kind of hedgerow that would be naturally occurring if it wasn't cut back. That's a hedge I planted in 1991 and it's only been breasted up with a, with a flail. A uh, hedge got it once and the rest of the time the cows cut it and to me the more you cut a hedge the more you have to cut a hedge so if you want to cut down and work don't cut it. There's an awful lot of farmers are ingrained into keeping things tidy and I think we want to just loose the reins a little bit on nature and she's well capable of looking after herself and I think if we don't always try and manipulate nature and just let it come to us I think we have a good chance of it responding. Tell us a little bit about your farm here Kim. It's a very diverse farm in what we have in the forest trees, hedges, ponds and so on, but we have a, a suckler herd, a pedigree suckler herd of Albright cattle and we have a small flock of sheep. The EIP is the European Innovation Partnership and what does that mean in practical terms for a farmer such as yourself then? It's a five-year project where um, scientists will come out and survey the farm or farms, I think there's 40 in the, in the, um, in the group, and they will do that over the summertime to ascertain the population of various insects, various plants on, on our farms. So in practical terms we might find out more about insects, butterflies and other uh, animals that are here in the, in the environment. Definitely, definitely. I mean there's an awful lot of farms out there 
which are every bit as diverse as this one, which are not getting recognised. And probably there's an awful lot of farms out there not as uh, biodiverse and still have the image of being very green farms. Uh, and we need to be able to encourage the farmers that are maybe not doing as much for the, for the wildlife to do it. And they'll find that if they do it, they will have, it'll have little effect on their, on their income. And what a positive contribution to biodiversity you have here on Kim's Farm in County Kildare. Well, we're going to take a break now, but we'll have lots more in part two. See you shortly. You're very welcome back to Nationwide. Now up and down the country, biodiversity has become a big part of the work of Tidy Towns groups. We've been to Tremor in County Waterford to find out the changes that they've been making. So uh, Tremor Tidy Town started uh, 12 years ago. I'm working in uh, Quisha Super Value and uh, with the National Tidy Towns, Super Value were the sponsors and I decided to see what I could do within, within the town. So I suppose we started small, we said we'd tidy up and you know plant some plants around the place and give it a bit of colour and that. So we're slow to start but uh, we progressed, um, our first project uh, was the picnic area opposite Apple Green. Um, we put in some plantings there. And the next project was behind us is the water feature and steps. And this is magnificent, uh, it's a great amenity to Tremor. We then moved on to the Donrail Walk where we um, resurfaced the pathway and added lights along the way. The last uh, 12 years we've really increased our marks, uh, phenomenal, and uh, I suppose where we were falling down was in biodiversity. I've known Anne for a couple of years and over the years Anne might have asked me from time to time for a little bit of advice about anything to do with you know the environment or ecology because that's my background. So I took the pollinator plan for communities and it has 24 points in it and I wrote a pollinator plan based on the 24 points. We also mapped out all of Tremor, we mapped all of the green areas in Tremor and for all of those green areas we have an action. So the plan is written over three years and we worked very closely with Waterford City and County Council to implement the plan and so last year saw the first year of the implementation of a number of those actions. We're very lucky here in Tremor. Tremor has a fantastic area. The sand dunes and the back strand I suppose is the, probably the most important uh, habitat that we have here, or well, there's two habitats there really, both of which are protected. Uh, there's a number of different species come in, in particular in the back strand you get a lot of um, wading birds coming in. So it's particularly important from a nature conservation point of view. So there's other areas in Tremor as well that are already species rich like Newtown Woods, the grassland at the Donner Rail which is particularly species rich and all of the coastal areas as well within Tremor that you probably aren't accessible but the cliff areas etc. So there's already very well established habitats here. So the work that we're doing um, is hoping to enhance that and so for example the Donner Rail was cut very closely in previous years so the grass levels were very short so it didn't allow for diversity to increase so by changing the cutting regime that's added to that and enhanced it and so changing these practices and bringing other things in and planting wildflowers in some of the planted areas you know this is all enhancing the natural biodiversity that's already here in this wonderful place. The focus for 2021 going forward is to take the, the non-public areas in Tremor and Anne and I are going to be sort of speaking to the people who own 
land privately in Tremor and seeing if we can implement the pollinator plan in those areas. So places like the race course, places like the land in front of the church, the zone by the church for example, so other areas like that. So that we're actually covering all of the green areas and that's the idea of the three year plan is that every green area in Tremor has been mapped on the map and that we're going to hopefully you know, be able to encourage changes in all of those. Really interesting work being done there by the Tidy Towns folks in Tremor in County Waterford. Well, we've come to the end of this evening's Nationwide. I hope our programme this evening has given you some food for thought for what you might do in your garden in order to encourage the pollinators. They are our friends. And so from all of us on the team, good evening. <laughs>